Lord has made and we're called to rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Despite the rain last night and throughout the morning that we may have heard and experienced, our God is still good because he knew the grass needed watering. He knew that the birds needed to be able to take a bath. He takes care of all of his creations. And so for that reason, we give him our very best praise. The Bible reminds us this way, from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, our God is worthy to be praised. And so if you're excited about God doing great things in your life, for moving in your life, for making ways in your life, for forgiving you over and over and over, whether you're virtual or in person, I dare you just to lift up your voice and say, thank you, God, because it's because of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. They're brand new. Every morning, great is thy faithfulness. And so we thank God on this day for allowing us to be able to come together to join in worship. I bid you good day from Encouragement Temple. And we hope right now, even as you are tuning in with us, for those of you that are here, that you have set your mind, your heart, your affections on the Lord our God because he loves you with an everlasting love. And as we begin to move into this worship experience, I invite you to join in a brief moment of prayer where we just welcome and thank God for his presence even on this Advent Sunday. Lord God, how we thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, and your kindness. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would just have your way around this place. Oh God, we pray that lives will be changed and rearranged. Oh God, that someone will be committed back unto you. Father, we pray that you would have in the praises of your people. So Father, whatever is on our minds today, whatever is setting us apart, oh God, and keeping us distracted, Lord, we pray and ask that right now that you allow us to cast it at your feet. Father, because we know that you are worthy of the glory, honor, dominion, and power, and only you can change our situation. So Father, we praise your name right now, and we bless you. We thank you for Jesus. It's in that powerful name that we thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Again, I welcome you to Encouragement Temple, to our worship experience. We invite you to sing when we sing, to clap when we clap our hands, and also to give when it's time to give, because we know that we're going to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Now we're going to be led in song by our music ministry under the leadership of Minister Sean St. Norton.
I stand before you because it is prayer time. It is prayer time, and we know that in the midst of our worshiping the Lord, praying, uh, praising the Lord, we know indeed that we have some things, yes. some situations, some challenges that are in our lives, and we need to take them to a great God to do great things. And so for that reason, I ask for those of you that are here, you're more than welcome to stand or kneel or sit at your seat. But I want you to take a posture of prayer whereby we're able to go to this great God with our great needs to do a great solution and great things. As we begin to uh, go into that sacred space, I want to lift to you a few names uh, that we have been praying for over the course of these last few weeks. And then I'm going to add a few more to this list. I ask that if you have any prayer requests that at this time for our virtual viewers that you would please submit them in the chat so that we can add them to our list. We do believe that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. Amen. So I ask that you will continue to pray for the Renee Milam family, as I mentioned on last week, uh, on the death of her four-year-old son. We ask that you would uh, lift her family up. Please pray for Sister Fifi, who continues to dialogue with us even outside of these walls. Uh, to share her love and support of encouragement to her, but she yet and still has the challenges with getting to the sanctuary as a result of work schedule conflicts. And so her desire is to be here. Pray that the Lord opens up a way. Opens up a way. And then also we ask that you continue to pray for Sister Stewart, who we thank God is in the place today. She's in the place today. So we serve a prayer answering and hearing God. Continue to pray for her. Yes. That she will continue to be strengthened. And not just her, but her family. We thank God for you, Sister Stewart, in your presence. Pray for Ivan and uh, Fallon and their family as well. They continue to navigate uh, just family uh, concerns and just trying to make their way into the household of faith. Dennis and his family, uh, he was here on last week and he still is jogging between work and coming to church and also the care of his father. Please pray uh, for him, uh, Brother Dennis. Uh, Christian Wilson, who's also a member of Encouragement Temple. Uh, who is uh, navigating life, just dealing with life. And, you know, right now everyone is dealing, but we ask that you would just continue to pray for her. Fred Smith and family uh, mentioned over the course of the last two weeks that he his death, the death of his father. So pre please pray for them in the bereavement process. We know that that can take some time. And there's nothing like uh, losing a family member. Uh, pray, please pray for Sister Sierra and Giovanni, uh, who are also part of Encouragement Temple. Pray for Sister KK uh, McGibbon and family who is having health challenges. Pray for her healing. Yes. Even with the doctors may not know how, how, what, or when. We know that God is a healer. Please yes. pray for Sister Barbara Booker who, in her absence who is not here. Uh, also, uh, the Gooseby family who suffered a loss of a child that was still in the growing process. Uh, the mother was pregnant with this child and uh, the baby died. And so we just ask that uh, you will pray for that family. Uh, we ask that you continue to lift up everyone that supports Encouragement Temple as well as Pastor Reed and I, uh, Minister Norton, everyone that is part of this family. Continue to lift up Terry Phillips, his family. Uh, lift up a co-worker of mine I want to add to this list. His name is Chris Rodriguez. Uh, over the course of these next few weeks, he'll be uh, enduring uh, a form of brain surgery. And so we ask that you would lift him up. Also a co-worker of mine uh, by the name of Alicia. She will also be going through a procedure on her back. So she will be having back surgery. And then I just want to add one more list. Reverend um, Barbara Williams and her, her husband, uh, uh, Mr. Williams, they are part of Wheeler Avenue. We just ask you to lift them up as he is experiencing health challenges and as well. We do know that this is a long list, but we're called to pray for one another. Yes. Right? Everything is not always going right. And even when it seems like it's going right, life can happen. Yes. And so we ask that you would pray with and for these individuals as well as those respective individuals that you may have concerns for. Let us go to our God in prayer. Lord God, how we thank you. We love you. We bless you. God, you are holy and righteous. Oh, God, there's no one that compares to you, Father. We can search all over, as the song says, and we will find no one that is greater than you, no one that is better than you. We can search high and low and still wouldn't find anyone better than you, Father. There is no one that compares to you, no 
No one stands beside you. No one is above you. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell there. And you sit high and you look down low upon us. You are able to see an area of view of all of our situations. God, you are the creator and sustainer of all life. Father, you are the one who from the stars and the moon and the sky. You are the creator. You are the one who allow boundaries to be placed within the rivers and the oceans, oh God. You are the creator. You are the one who breathed the breath of life into humanity. You alone are the creator. And we thank you, Father, that your word remains the same. That we can trust you. We can stand on it. And if you said it, that settles it, Father. Just like today, we can see that the sun still suspends itself in the sky, oh God. We thank you that your word is faithful. Father, we just want to thank you right now. Even as we know that we have concerns on our hearts, Father. But before we ask you for anything. God, we want to thank you for everything. Father, we were always taught, I was taught that thank you makes room for more. So, Father, we thank you that last night wasn't our last night. Father, that you've given us another chance because clearly we don't deserve it. But it's because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Father, we thank you that you've given us a clean slate to get right today what we didn't get right on yesterday. The conversations that we should have had, that we didn't have. You've given us a chance today to have those conversations. Father, the praise that we didn't give you on yesterday, you're giving us another chance today to praise you, oh God. Father, we thank you for another chance. When our families give up on us, you give us another chance. When the job throws us to the side, you give us another chance. Father, we thank you when the doctors say no, you can give us another chance. We just thank you so much for all that you do and we don't want to take you for granted, Father. Someone didn't tell you thank you this morning for waking them up. So we say thank you. Thank you for food on our table. Even if it wasn't what we would have liked to eat, we thank you that you provide for us, oh God, that you give us our daily bread. Both our physical nourishment and our spiritual nourishment. Thank you, Father, that we had clothes to put on, that we had a way and a means to get it to the household of faith. Thank you, God, that we had a bed to sleep and went on last night. Someone was outside. As the song says, oh, God, that could have been us outdoors with no food, with no clothes, all left alone. Father, but you didn't see fit. Father, we thank you for another chance. We thank you for our health and our strength. The eyes that we have to see with, even if we need corrective lenses, oh God, we thank you that we can see. Yes, Lord. We thank you for hearing, even if we need a hearing aid, we thank you we can hear. We thank you that we're able to move our legs and walk, even if we need a walking cane. Father, we say thank you. Thank you, God. You've been good to us. Father, and even as we are in this second uh, Sunday uh, in the month of December nearing the end of the year God when we look over our lives you have been good to us things may not be as well as we would like them to be but we thank you that they're not as bad as they could be Father thank you Father we lift up oh God and acknowledge even right now that we have fallen short of your glory We've fallen short of what you've asked us to do. We've fallen short of representing you well in our thought, word, and deed. Father, we ask for the forgiveness of sin. Father, forgive us for the negative conversations and statements that we've made to one another. Yes. Even being a believer, even being a part of your family, Father, forgive us. Forgive us for not trusting you with our lives. For doubting you and trusting man. Trusting our bosses, our family members, our friends, our boo, our bae, oh God. Forgive us for putting more trust and stock in them and our money and our resources than trusting in you. Forgive us for putting our trust fully into the doctors and not trusting you as being Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. 
Father, forgive us for jealousy and envy, rage, bitterness, anger. Forgive us for being selfish, careless. Forgive us, oh God, for the backbiting and the lustful desires. Forgive us, oh God, those that have committed adultery, those who have stolen. Forgive us, those that struggle, struggle continuously with alcoholism and drugism. Forgive us. For leaning on other spirits to help provide us with what we need or what we feel that we need. Forgive us. Forgive that individual, God, who has engaged in some type of demonic activity, knowing that you are the God of light and love. Father, we ask that you will bring that person back unto you. Nothing is too hard for you. And we know that anyone that is in your hands, the devil in hell can't take them out. So, Father, we thank you for your strength, your power, and your might. Father, we pray right now for those that are bereaved, those who have experienced death in their family over the course of these last few months of this year, oh God. Even over the course of this entire year of 2022, Father, we ask that you would continue to rock them in your arms. Wipe the tears from their eyes that seem like a never-ending river. Let them know, remind them that you don't make mistakes, but indeed all things work together for the good of those that love you and are called according to your purpose. Will it hurt? Yes. But Father, we thank you that you are a God who is full of compassion and love. And you're able to hold us tightly and let us know that everything will be all right, oh God. Father, we pray that you would Save even in the midst of this bereavement. Whoever is seeking salvation, whoever is in need of salvation, we ask that salvation will be made available to them because we know, oh God, that you have a purpose in everything. Father, I pray that you will be with those that have uh, been diagnosed with cancers and illnesses that have completely ravished their mind and even shaken their faith. Someone felt that because they went to church every Sunday that they wouldn't experience cancer. Someone thought because they prayed every day that they wouldn't experience this diagnosis. But Father, we thank you, oh God, that even right now, that you can heal according to your will, Father. So we pray that those that are dealing with cancer, those that are struggling with COVID or even the common cold, oh God, the flu, emphysema, oh God, blood disease, and neurological disorders. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would heal, that you would reveal it to the doctors and the nurses and the pharmacists and the researchers, the biologists, the chemists, whoever is under their care, oh God, help them to see what they can't see. In the name of Jesus, Father, we ask for healing for those that are dealing with mental disorders, oh God. Children that have been diagnosed with schizophrenia, bipolar, ADHD, and ADD, oh God. Those that have been diagnosed with autism, oh God. Those that have been diagnosed with emotional disorders, oh God. We ask in the name of Jesus that you will stabilize. Only you can do it because you created the body, oh God. We know that all you have to do is speak and things will change so you can speak. To that imbalance in that person, that individual that can't keep still. Father, you can speak. And things will change. Because we know that in the name of Jesus, even demons tremble. So, Father, speak a word today. Speak into that lives of that child, oh God. We ask that you will be with parents that are struggling with the fact and the reality that their child has been abducted and kidnapped. Father, we hear it all the time. We see it on the news all the time. We get the text messages on our phone all the time. We ask for comfort for that family and that, that you would be with those that are in jail cells and those that are in foreign ground on foreign ground, oh God, that are fighting for this country, missionaries and evangelists that are even trying to go around and spread your gospel, that Jesus saves. We ask that you would keep them safe and that you will protect them, oh God. Give them a holy boldness, oh God, that they will say, for you they live and for you they die, oh God. Help them. Oh God, to understand that everything will work out for 
for their good. And if they suffer with you, they shall reign with you. Father, we just bless your name that you never get tired of hearing from us. For that person that is seeking a job, employment, the finances just seem to keep dwindling. For that man that is the head of that house that just cannot find a stable job. Father, we ask you to encourage that man, encourage that woman, that mother, that father. Encourage them in you. Father, that you will allow the right employer to see their resume, to see their application. And to make the decision to move based on the movement of the Holy Spirit. That this is the right candidate. I thank you that you're able to qualify those that don't have the degrees. Those that don't have the connections. Father, we thank you that you are faithful. And eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men. The things that you have in store. Father, your word says that no one shall be put to shame if they put their trust in you. So, oh God, help them to trust you even when they can't trace your hand. When they don't understand why. Help them, oh God. Now, Father, I dare to close this prayer asking that you will cover Oh, God, everyone that is under the sound of my voice, every family that's represented, even Pastor Reed as he seeks to bring the message. Father, we need a word from you on this Advent Sunday. But we remember with great expectation the great things that you have done in sending Jesus Christ into the world. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. Father, we thank you even as we waited in expectation and we remember the long-awaited King. Father, we still wait in expectation knowing that you can do great things in our lives, that you can do the miraculous, oh God. So thank you right now for speaking a word through Pastor Reed and giving us the heart that has fertile ground, that is ready to receive it, that it would know us spiritually, not just for Sunday, but throughout the rest of the week. Father, we thank you and we bless your name that you hear us every single time we pray. And because you hear us, we know that we have the petition and we know that you will answer. It's in your powerful name that we pray and ask God, we thank you that we have the victory because we belong to you. It's in that perfect name that we pray and ask it all. Even Jesus the Christ.
that he woke us up this morning with a portion of our health and strength. We just talk about how great the Lord is. With a mind to want to praise him, a mind to want to tell him thank you. How great he is. The summer says, forget not the Lord in all his benefits. Him being great. Hezron begat Ram, 
and Ram begat Aminadab, and Aminadab begat Nashon, Nashon, I'm sorry, and Nashon begat Salem, Salmon, y'all, y'all pray for me. Salmon begat Boaz by Rahab. Boaz begot Obed by Ruth. Obed begot Jesse. Jesse begot David the king. David the king begot Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon begot Rehoboam. Rehoboam begot Abijah. Abijah begot Asa. Asa begot Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat begot Jeram. Joram begot Uzziah. Uzziah begot Jotham. Jotham begot Ahaz. Ahaz begot Hezekiah. Hezekiah begot Manasseh. Manasseh begot Amon. And Amon begot Josiah. And Josiah begot Jeconiah and his brothers about the time they were carried away to Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconiah begot Shetil. Shetil begot Jerubal. Jerubal begot Abidu, Abiu, Abiu begot Elakim, Elakim begot Azar, Azar begot Zadok, Zadok begot Achim, Achim, yes, begot Eliud, Eliud begot Elazar, Elazar begot Mephane, Mephane begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, who was born Jesus, who is the Christ. All the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David unto captivity in Babylon are 14 generations. And from the captivity in Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, readers, and doers of his word. You all may be seated. In the presence of the Lord. For these few moments, I want to preach on the topic. We up in here. For a proper way to say it, we are in here. We are in here. In 2008, Martin Lawrence came out with a movie called Welcome Home, Roscoe Jenkins. Some of y'all laugh, you know the movie. It's not a Christian movie. We don't judge me. <laughs> he went by the name of R.J. Stevens. He was living in California, living his best life. He had become successful, this successful television host. And his popularity had grown. But in the midst of his popularity growing, he hid the thing that he was embarrassed the most about him from his significant other. And that was his family. He was ashamed of his family for various reasons. He didn't want his girlfriend to see his family because in his family he perceived and believed that there were people who were not dignified people. There were people who just, in our terminology, would just act a fool, who were just crazy, ghetto families, who had no sense at all. Uh, what you say, Pastor Craig? They were just all out living their best life. And Martin, who the character is, R.J. Stevens, wanted to stay away from that because he was ashamed of his family. But because it was his parents' 50th anniversary, he decides to take his girlfriend, his significant other at the time with him, but he warned her that my family are not like all family. My family are not, everybody is not like I am. Everybody is not educated. Everybody is not studious. Everybody is not proper and prosperous as I am. And I'm going to stop right there because if we are to be honest, that is the way every family is. Everybody is not spectacular. Everybody is not educated. You have some people in our families that's rough around the edges. You have some family members who you would introduce to the best of the world, but the reality is these individuals are part of our family. And so as this individual begins to come around his family members, their true colors have begun to show. Mike Epps, who plays the cousin Reggie, was always scamming and scheming, trying to 
get over it. Yet a cousin played by said the entertainer who was the pretty boy who always won the competition. He had a big brother by the name of Otis who was always demo and strong and he had a sister played by Monique who was the residential uh, prostitute. She went to the jail houses and hung with the jail men to give them some love and to give them some love. This was all a part of his family that he wanted to keep out of his family, keep out amongst his circle. But I love the end of the movie because the end of the movie should help us. At the end of the movie, at his parents' uh, dinner, he got up and he talked about all of his family members. He said, Reggie, yeah, you, you are slick with the tongue. Uh, uh, Monique, you carry a right hook. Otis, you are very strong, but uh, what I like, what he said at the end of the movie, said, in spite of all of the ways that you guys act, in spite of everything that you do in life, you are still a part of the family. I'm going to stop because I'm not no longer talking about the movie. The reality is that us that sit in the body of Christ Everybody will not look just like us. Everybody won't act like us. Everybody background won't be the way that I was are. But the reality is I thank God because in spite of all that it is, we are part of God's family. No matter your background or education, no matter your skin color or your social status in life, we are all a part of God. Family. As we look at our text, let me give you a background of everything. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called the synoptic gospels because they are relatable in what is written in their gospel. But unlike Mark, Matthew and Luke talks about the lineage of Jesus Christ. It's in Matthew chapter 1, but it's also in Luke chapter 3. Luke sticks to the tradition. And sticking to the tradition, in his genealogy, he lists nothing but males. But if you look into Matthew's genealogy or lineage, you'll see that every name that is listed is not just males. I believe Matthew makes it a point to bring out certain women in our text to open our minds to certain things. And the question will be, why would Matthew do something different like that? Understanding and knowing that in their culture, you should list the men and not the women. Why would he list these women? I believe not only does he list these women, but he lists other individuals who would talk about in the text. And when we look through his lineage, we'll see four types of We'll see individuals first of discredible reputation. Discredible reputation. As I named earlier, he listed five women. Now, most of us, if we're going to make a list and we give five women and we go outside the grain, we will get those who have great character, those who've done everything right, those who was not no dirt behind them. But if you Catalog through Matthew's list, he lists five women who have questionable characters. The first woman that's listed in this genealogy is Tamar. You say, Tamar, what is up with Tamar? Well, in Matthew, I mean, in Genesis 38, Tamar is known for marrying two of Judas' sons. And the Bible tells us that both of those sons died. The oldest son dies because he was wicked. The second oldest son dies because of their custom. He was supposed to lay with her and give birth to a son. And when it was time to come, he got up and he dies. And all of a sudden, now the rumor that's going around with Tamar, according to Judah, is that every man that marries her dies. Some of y'all, we know people like that. It seems like every time you get married within three, four years, the husband dies. And I don't know if I want my son to marry you. I don't know if I want my kid folk to marry you. <laughs> and so knowing that the custom is to give the next son to her, Judah says, I'm going to give you my third son. But he sends her off because he was not going to.
to give them to her. And as she realized that Judah didn't do her part, the Bible tells us that she dressed as a prostitute because she heard that Judah was coming. She lays with Judah. She has a son with Judah. And Judah was going to try to kill her, but Judah had gave her some things for her to for her to remember, for him to remember, hey, you slept with me. And so we are informed that she had a son by the name of Perez. And the name of her son named Perez was called Breakthrough. Understanding that the Lord had made a way from her because the Lord saw upon her. But in spite of all that, her reputation was one that kills husband and one that dresses up as a prostitute. The second woman that's listed in the genealogy of Jesus Christ is Rahab. If you've been in church any time, you, you, you know the story of Rahab. Rahab was a real prostitute. Not only was she a real prostitute, but she owned a brothel. And we make light of the story that she hid the, 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 these Hebrew boys she did. But if you read the Bible, the Bible says they went there to spend the night. And so that's another conversation. They knew who Rahab was and they went there to spend the night before they hid. But Rahab being this prostitute, she already was talked about. Oh, you know when strange people come, you know where they're going first. They heard how Rahab, they heard what she does. So her, 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 her character had already been in the mud amongst those people. And they said, the bitch was Ruth. Y'all know the story. Ruth, Ruth was not a, a Israelite. And so since Ruth was not an Israelite, they had no business marrying outside of their race. But her being a Moabite woman married a wealthy man. And you can hear the conversations that's going on about her. Oh, this foreign woman, she a gold digger. She didn't just marry anybody. She got with somebody with some money, so she won't have to work. You know, she was in the field with us. Now she went from the field to the palace. She had a bad reputation. Pastor Chris said she was smart dweller. She was smart or not. She still had a reputation. The fourth woman who was mentioned is Bathsheba. I want you to see this. Bathsheba, if you don't know the story, the story is she was outside bathing and David saw her. She had a reputation. She, some people say she knew what she was doing. She knew knew she was bathing in the king palace right there. I don't believe that was David's first time looking at Bathsheba. Y'all women, y'all know, y'all know a man looking at y'all strange and you don't entertain him. You're not going to go in this area anymore. But if you if you see something about him, you're going to keep doing it. But the Bible tells us that she bathed naked. David didn't go to the war like he was supposed to. He gets with her. He sleeps with her while she's married to another man. Yeah. And so whether we want to look at She was called an adulterer because she was somebody else's husband. And the last woman that we have is Mary, the mother, of, the mother of Jesus Christ. In the church, we paint a pretty picture today that she was the mother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But back then, she being 14 years old, 15 years old, telling somebody that I'm pregnant through a Holy Ghost. I wish my wife would tell me she was pregnant from the Holy Ghost. We going to have some problems. And so imagine the reputation. Now, mind you, God uses people. Imagine the reputation that these women had. You crazy. You pregnant and you talk about a Holy Ghost. You married to Joseph, but you pregnant and, and then you go on and you come back and your belly is showing. We know you've been gone with your cousin. You've been out there doing the most. She had a reputation. In society's eyes. What we also see in this family tree of Jesus Christ is people with inconsistent characteristics. Inter uh, uh, inconsistent characteristics. We see Solomon who's in the family tree of Jesus Christ. And even though Solomon is the richest and wisest man that ever lived, the Bible tells us that he basically lost his way because he loved women. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. He had a thousand women. His character didn't line up with what, what was going on. Yes, he is wise, but is he that? Is he using his wisdom all the time? The reality is he was not using his wisdom because the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy that a king shall only have one wife, but yet he had 700 wives and 300 half pieces. He had too much going on, inconsistent with his character.
on the throne, David to us is considered the greatest king of all time. But if you look through David's life, he had some inconsistencies with his character. Just like Solomon, he got it from his daddy. His daddy had women problems. Not only did his daddy have women issues, but David did not know how to resolve issues amongst his family. What you mean? He had a half son to rape his half sister. He had another son that killed a brother. Then a son rises up against him. And David did not say a word about any of the issues that was going on. We, we're talking about people with inconsistent character. We are traced to Abraham. But Abraham had some inconsistencies. He lied and said Sarah was his sister twice just to escape So you're saying, my family is not perfect, but as we continue to look down the lineage of Jesus Christ, his family was not perfect as well. We also have individuals who live in uncomfortable circumstances. I read it in the text. The text says these were born one after the takeover of Babylon. What is that? In other words, these people was taken away from their homes to go live as slaves and captives somewhere else. They were they didn't raise up rich. They were brought up in the kingdom. They were brought up struggling. They were brought up in the project. They didn't have everything that they had before. They didn't have everything that their forefathers have. Their situations were uncomfortable. And finally, Jesus had people who was morally corrupt in his family. Morally corrupt. Ahaz, Manasseh, these individuals, when you read in the book of Kings, the Bible said that they did evil in the sight of the Lord. You know, these people who just don't go to church, who just don't care, on Sunday they go smoke their weed and cigarettes, and they go do just what they do. Now, most of us, when we look at the family, we think Jesus Christ, we think everything should be perfect. We think everything should be right. We think everything should go as status quo. But the Bible traces us, it shows us that Jesus' family is just like all of our family. I got hiccups. We're not perfect. We do our own thing. Everybody don't see things the way that I see it. And so after knowing this about the lineage of Jesus Christ, after understanding this, then, then with all of these imperfections, but there's three things that also sticks out about the family tree, about the lineage of Jesus Christ. And the first thing that really sticks out is Christ will accept anybody in spite of social status. He will accept anybody. Galatians 3 and Colossians 3 tells us that there's neither Greek nor Jew, slave nor free man nor female, circumcised nor uncircumcised when it comes to the family of Christ. And what they were basically telling us is sometimes you will have people that don't look like you, you will have people who doesn't smell like you, you will have people who don't think like you, you will have people who don't walk like you, going to have people who don't talk like you. You're going to have people who just don't understand like you. He said that the, the prostitute, the foreigners, the rich, the poor, the cute, the ugly, the black, the white. He said all of these individuals were all connected and are a part of Christ's family. Which means we can't look down at the drug user or the drug pusher. We can't look down
accept anybody. But secondly, God can use anybody in spite of their past history. He can use anybody in spite of their past history. In spite of the bad reputation that Tamar is given. Tamar You got 
to be careful when we look at a person who gives birth and, and say, oh, I don't know why they're having all these kids. They can't, tell, can't, 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 can't take care of these kids. They ain't educated. Why they doing all of this? You don't know who that person is giving birth to. You don't know who that person is raising. That person probably is raising the next president. Probably raising up the next powerful man of God. Bye-bye. And we're reading about Rahab to this day because she took a stand and said, 
say, I'm not going to make my money, forget my business, because God has something better in store. David, you guys, as we talk about all the things about David, one thing David was willing to do, in spite of all his character flaws, is David was willing to stand in the midst of something that the people want. What you mean? When Goliath came and challenged the people and said, bring me a warrior, nobody stood forth because everybody was scared because they saw a test in front of them that they could conquer, that they feel like they had no reason to go over. And that's how most of us are when we conquer or we face something that's bigger than us. Instead of us facing it with faith, we tuck tail and hide. How you know? Because you know you need to be in church on a Sunday while going through your past, but instead of you coming and giving God glory for it, you stay at home. David understood it, looking at Goliath, talk about the people of God. And that's what you do when you don't stand firm in your belief with God. You basically, you, your trial is saying, I knew that I was bigger than your God. Whenever we allow our, our trials to have that type of dominion over us, that we're willing to stop living, we're willing to stop moving, we're willing to forsake all. What you are basically saying is that my trial is bigger than my God. David says, who is this unclean Philistine? What David was saying is, I understand that you are a warrior and you've had many fights, but I serve a God that's bigger than you. And y'all know the story. David went out with just five little old rocks and a slingshot. And the Bible says that he hit Goliath with one shot. Now I've heard preachers say he took five just in case he missed, he had four more. No, that ain't the truth. The Bible says there were five laws of the Philistine. And what David was basically saying is, I got a rock for each one of you. And what David was saying is at that point, even though he had some issues, he trusted God enough to know that he would not miss, that every time I shoot, that God is going to solve it. What you say? You got enough, have enough faith and confidence to know once you pray to the Lord and you ask the Lord to do something, you just got to believe that God is going to heal you, God is going to answer you, but you got to be willing to accept that answer from God. Because most of us don't like God else. The Bible says his ears is open to the cries of the righteous. He hears our cry, but are we willing to accept his answers? That's the biggest thing. God might say, you might say, God, take it away. God might say, go through it. Just like he did with Paul. Paul said, I asked the Lord three times to move this. God, get rid of this thorn. God, I'm tired. God, fix my husband. He still don't listen. My kids still don't act right. God, change this thing. And you wonder why your husband still leaves his clothes on the floor. You wonder why he still moves at his pace. You wonder why your kids are still acting up. You wonder why because God says what he told the Paul, look, my grace is sufficient. Paul didn't like the answer because he wanted it gone. But one thing Paul did, Paul understood the answer. And I want all of us to understand the answer when God answers us is he's doing it to perfect us. He's doing it to build us. He's doing us to fulfill purpose that he has within us. And we know the story of Mary. Mary didn't ask to be used. Mary was like, you sure you talking about me? But what I like about Mary, Mary said, all right, blessed be the name of the Lord. God, whatever you are going to do, do it in my life. And that's how we get to have to get to a point. Mary knew she was going to be talked about. Mary knew she was going to be ridiculed. Mary knew they were going to try to stone and kill her. Mary knew they were going to try to pass her out. But one thing about Mary, you want me to do, then so be it. And we got to get to that point where we say, you know what? You can talk about me. You can laugh at me. You can cuss me off. You can do all that you can. But God said it, so be it. All these individuals had questionable issues about their lives. But what I like is I believe they understood what you said. Unto him who's able to keep you from falling, but also to present you faultless. Because what they knew is their life was not spotless. 
the family tree of Christ, there will be some people whose lives is not spotless. Some people will have things that will follow them for the rest of their lives. What you mean to this day? We still refer to Rahab as the prostitute. To this day, we don't call her the former prostitute. We and people, Rahab the prostitute. Rahab the that what it followed her. And you know the craziest thing about it is that, Sister Stewart, is that when he bought her out, she probably kept being a prostitute. That's how we you 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 know how we Lord, if you bring me out of this, I promise you I won't do it again. The Lord brought, she said, the Lord bring you out, you do it again. She probably still did it a few more times until she just said, you know what? Okay, now, Lord, it's enough. Now I got to see. Now I'm going to really live this. You got, so what, what, what you said? Because, oh my God, because of your history, and you may have slipped when you say, Lord, forgive me. Doesn't mean God will disqualify you. The Bible said a just man will fall seven times. But what I love is not in the fall, because if you go fall seven times, that means you got to get up. So it ain't in the fall. If you fall, get up. If you fall again, get up. If you fall again, get up. I believe that Rahab may have did a few more brothels. She may have opened one up in Canaan, and she might have had one also in Jerusalem. But then when God really touched her life, she, I believe she let it go. So God is that type of God. We we all up in here. We all are part of this family. People that have committed murder, rapists, child molesters, all of those individuals, the people who we look down on, if they repent for their sins and accept Jesus Christ as their Savior, then they are a part of God's family. Because what I thank God for is God is not a respective person. And since he's not of a respective person, why should I be? He accepted me with all my mess. With all my flaws, with all my issues, and since I've been saved, he still accepted me with my mess, my flaws, and my issues. Because the reality is that the Bible says all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. But I thank God that he's a God that will forgive us for any fault that we commit. So when that person
was a part of his family. They may not be driving the beds in the bus, but they are part of his family. They may not be, but they are part of his family. You may be a prophet, but they are part of his family. Yeah, yeah. Matthew, I believe, makes it a point for those readers, once we read and understand, he wants us all to know that nobody is exempt. Nobody is specialized in this family. We all are in here. And so since we are in here, don't let nobody hold you back because socially you're not living up to their standards. Don't let nobody hold you back because you got a past. Don't let nobody talk about you because you got some limitations. No, God accept me. And since God accept me, I'm going to stand forward. I'm going to move and I'm going to walk in the newness of life because the Bible tells me that if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. All things go pass away and the whole all things become new. And so you tell him, yes, I don't have it all together, but I'm a child of God. Yes, I'm not rich, but I'm in the family of God. Yes, I did some things, but now I'm in the family of God. Because the songwriter said it best. You can have the silver and gold. You can have the status quo. But Kirk Franklin said, but I'd rather have Jesus. Yes. And in having Jesus, it's more than any of that. Yeah, I'm in the family. So don't so if you got tattoos and neck rings and toe rings and nose rings, you come in here and praise God. You got on pants dressed. You come in here and praise God. You are part of the family. Just like my natural family don't have it all together, God's family ain't going to have it all together. But the one thing that we have in common is that we are all blood. One thing that we have in common is that we all have the spirit of God. And if we have the spirit of God, I'm going to love you. I'm going to accept you. I'm going to thank God for you. And the case is closed. How am I closing? Here's my closing for us who are called Christians. Now, for us who are called Christians, don't give nobody a side eye. Don't look at them crazy. Because you got the lingo, because you know what to say, you know how to say it, you know when to say it. But for those of you who decide to be Christians, you can't be a part of this family because you don't talk the way certain people do. You don't move the way they move. No. God will use you in your skin. Am I closing? Y'all, that's my second one. You know, we get three of them. Since we are in the family, let us do what Christ says. Love your neighbor. Though you may not look like me, but I'm going to love you anyhow. Though you may not talk, just like we love our natural family, even though they get on our nerve. You know they're talking about you. You know they kicked us to the curb, but I still love you anyhow. The same attributes and love that we give them, we should give also to the body of Christ. When that person does wrong and they come back, I'm going to love you. Because we are part of the family. Since we are part of the family, we're going to build each other up. We're going to accept you. We're going to thank God for you. And we're going to keep walking. So since we all are up in here, we are part of this family. Let's do like they used to do back in the day when they on Sundays. Let us gather as a family. Go to the house of God. Give God glory because he is good. And he's worthy to praise, to be praised. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you. God, I thank you for being a part of your family, God. Father, I thank you, God, for your word. That proves to us that we don't have to have it all together. No. No, that 
that shows us, God, that in your family lineage that I can see myself and be grateful. Because since you allow them to be a part of your family, that I can also be a part of your family. That person, God, who feels they can't come to the church, or they can't connect with you because they feel like they're not there. They're worried about what people may say. Father, give them the courage to come so they can see, God, that none of us are perfect. We all have issues. But in the midst of our issues, you yet love us, accept us. As a part of your family. Father, draw them in. Not let them have them not to look at people. But to look into the hills of which come forth all of our help. Knowing that I help come from you. Father, we thank you right now. God, we're glad that we are in the family of Christ. Father, we love and we adore you. And we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We say amen. Though you're watching online, maybe you're not a part of this family. But I would like to invite you into the family of Christ. For that person who said that I've done too much. Know that you haven't done too much that God can't forgive. David was a murderer, but he was a part of God's family. Solomon committed adultery, but he was a part of God's family. If that's you, I encourage you to come leave us a comment. You're saying, Pastor, I, I know who the Lord is. I'm a part of his family. But I need to be a part of a local church family. If that's you, that's viewing online, we ask you to leave us a comment. If you desire to be a part of Encouragement Temple, we're here. Let me let this disclaimer, we're not perfect leaders. We have issues. We go through trials and tribulations. But we serve a perfect God. I'd like to be a part of a church that's leading in that direction. We would love for y'all to be a part of Encouragement Temple. Lead and let us know. We thank God for you all on this morning. We bring forth for our announcements. We we'll bring forth Pastor Chris as she give us our announcements. Y'all receive her as she comes. Amen. Amen. Stand before you for our announcements on this day. I just want to remind you all uh, that we will have our last Bible study of the year on this Wednesday. Yes this Wednesday. Uh, so, come on out. <laughs> come on out. We're going to actually be uh, relaxed the rest of the, the month of December, and so um, this coming Wednesday will be the last one. Uh, and, uh, of course, that's intentional because uh, we will have Christmas will be the following week, right. and so we don't want to still fight with, you know, persons trying to still spend time with family and things like that. And also, we just believe in having a reprieve uh, so that we can all be rejuvenated as we go into the next year. That, that should not stop anyone from reading your Bible. Don't allow Bible study to be the only time you open up your Bible. Right. But we will uh, finish up Ephesians chapter 6 on this Wednesday. So please come on out. Uh, 
if you're able to do so. And when I say if you're able to, I mean if you have a vehicle, if you have means of transportation, if you're alive and well, you have a Bible and a desire to read the word, come on out and dialogue with us. We have a wonderful time. I'm uh, engaging the scriptures. As I said before, Bible study is a time where you can ask questions. You can't always ask questions while the preacher's up here preaching. So come on out to Bible study so that you can be more informed as a Christian. And even for those that have not opened the Bible before, this would be a great time, great opportunity for you to explore the Word of God uh, together as a family, as Pastor Reed has indicated. So please come on out again as this Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. And then also we want to remind you all that there are given opportunities available to you. For our virtual viewers, you already know the drill. Cash App and PayPal, that information is available to you at the bottom of the screen. For those of you that are here that want to pay by that method, we have the QR codes on the back wall. Uh, you can do so that way. Or you can just be old school and just drop it in the tray. Uh, it will all go towards the benefit of God's kingdom, even as we continue to do the work of the Lord Jesus Christ in the north side of you. Houston. Then also we will uh, want to invite you as we near the end of the year to remind you that we will be having a watch night service on December 31st. Are we are we doing 9 o'clock, 10? What time? Oh, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. At 10 o'clock. So don't try to go to sleep. Uh, for those of you just keeping it real, we know that some people want to go to church first and then they try to hit the club. But just go ahead and ring the New Year in the right way. Come on and ring it in with Jesus and then take him with you where you go. So just go ahead and come on in. Worship the Lord uh, with us as we celebrate. God has been good to us. He's been really good to us. No matter what you may think, he's been good. Our situations are not predicated or do not change his character. We may not always understand it, but uh, he knows that what he is doing. So please come and join us at 10 p.m. 4714 FM 1960 West Suite 103. Houston, Texas, 77069. Invite someone, bring someone with you so that you can worship and praise the Lord with us as we go into 2023. I believe that is all the announcements that we have at this uh, present moment. Uh, oh, we also are going to have uh, a special uh, edition on to next Sunday's worship experience during the worship period. So we hope that you all, uh, our encouragement supporters and our members, come on into the place. Make sure you show your support as we will be uh, having a baptism here um, on next Sunday as well. So please come on out and support as we welcome in uh, new, new persons who have decided to uh, be a part of the family of God by way of identifying in his baptism and connecting with Encouragement Temple. So we will have our baptism service occurring during our worship experience. So Sunday next Sunday may be a little bit longer than anticipated, but it's all for God's glory. That's a good thing. The Bible says that the angels in heaven rejoice when one comes unto him. And so even identifying through baptism, we want to celebrate with this young man and or woman uh, so that they can uh, know and feel the love of Jesus Christ as they identify with him. I believe that is it. Continue to pray for those that you do not see for our persons that are here at as well as the, our virtual viewers, those names that were lifted up. We want to remind you all what Encouragement Temple is about. Encouragement Temple is a place where Christ is edified through our worship and our witness, where believers are empowered through the preached gospel and discipleship, and where the community is enlightened on God's saving grace to all. Pastor Reed talked about that to all part uh, today. So please go be a simple according to those announcements. Uh, may the Lord bless you real good. I'm going to place you into the hands of Pastor Reed uh, after we collect the offering. Uh, just go around, little man. You want me to do it? You go. You do it for me. Yeah, you, you walk faster than I do. So just go around. And while, he, while he's doing that, I'm going to give you back to Pastor Reed so he can share the benediction. And we thank God for uh, those announcements. Watch night, watch night, you guys. On that Sunday, on that service, once we dismiss, we won't see you guys again too that Wednesday for Bible study. Because that's Saturday night going to Sunday morning. And so what we do, we have service, we have communion. God bless everyone. Bring in the new year that way.
by the time we leave, it'll be probably close to one o'clock. And so we're dismissed. Y'all can't stay up too. And y'all, Lord, say the same. Pastor Chris won't be with us this, this year, you guys. Um, she won't be physically here because by the end, she might still be in the house. I'll be in the sanctuary, y'all. Lord, say the same. I'll be still here. You'll be here. But she won't be in the sanctuary. Uh, again, keep uh, Brother Calvin Jackson in prayer that he will be baptized. I believe, you know, it rained this morning, but look how God did that outside, you guys. People saw the rain and were like, oh, it's raining. But God knows how, how to do what he does. He does great things. And so, endure the rain. Endure the rain, as Pastor Chris said, you get to the sunshine. Hey, man, we're going to ask everybody to stand again. We're excited. Uh, for Sister Stewart being back, y'all, we just excited. That's what we real excited about. What'd you say? Yeah, we're praying. The factual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. Y'all, let us pray until the King eternal, immortal, invisible, to the only wise God be glory, honor, dominion, and power. God, we thank you today, God, for your word reminding us, God, that we are all a part of your family, God. And God, being a part of your family, let us be mindful of who we're interacting with. And let us show the love of Christ through all our daily walk. And Father, as we leave this place, Father, we ask you, God, to protect us as we drive over the highways, God. Keep us safe from accidents, Father. And Father, allow us to get back to our various homes and this destination safe. And God, when we get back to our homes, allow it to be the way it was we left, the way that we left it. Safe, sound, and in one piece. And God, we thank you. We're claiming it done. And Father, we ask you, God, according to your will, you bring us back into the house of God this Wednesday, Father. As we conclude our Bible study lesson. Father we thank you. For being a part of your family. We love and we adore you. And we bless your name. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We say amen. amen. Be encouraged. You are dismissed. We will see you this Wednesday. At 7 p.m.